Hey everyone, welcome to Planes Overhead. Uh, we're just continuing on the radio navigation series uh, that I had uh, uh, begun once. And the uh, standard disclaimer, today we are doing radar principles. Radar is of course very, very important for aviation. Okay, so radar stands for radio detection and ranging. There are two types of radars that are majorly used. One is the primary radar, which works on echo principle or also called as reflection principle and uses one frequency throughout. So what really happens is the radar emits uh, electromagnetic radiation. Okay, so that radiation bounces off back on, a, on an object, it reflects back and it comes back to the radar which receives it and then prints it on a screen. Okay, so the next uh, newer type of generation is the secondary radar where the radar transmits on one frequency but receives on a different frequency. So this happens only on basis of an interrogation. So aircraft has to transmit after a radar interrogation, meaning radar asks for some information to a particular aircraft. Only then the aircraft will reply, but the key difference is it's on a different frequency. Okay, so this improves accuracy quite a bit. Okay, so these are the two types of radars. Then the radar applications, uh, of course, the ATC uses radar for monitoring of aircraft and provides separation and approach letdowns like the radar vectoring, basically. And uh, then you have navigational systems such as the DME, distance measuring equipment, uh, which use secondary radar principles to give accurate slant ranges. And uh, you have the airborne weather radar, which uh, use the primary radar principle to detect uh, in-flight weather. Okay, so... Um, it works on moisture detection uh, when the radar sends out a beam it reflects back and the radar then prints it onto the screen so let's uh, look at the radar frequencies uh, generally the radars use vhf and above for the following reasons because since they are powerful they are free of static and external noise and uh, higher frequencies of course mean shorter wavelengths so the advantage with shorter wavelengths is they are efficient beams, meaning they can focus very well and they reflect more efficiently and they can create shorter pulses. OK, so that is the advantages and why VHF and above frequencies are used for radar operations. Coming to the pulse technique. Uh, so what you see here is the uh, this is a pulse that is there. So within a pulse, you will have a lot of uh, uh, cycles, okay? So this is pulse width, the width of the pulse or pulse length also they call it. The time between uh, two pulses is actually called pulse recurrence interval or PRI, okay? So it's called PRI. And uh, I have some definitions for you here. So each pulse can have many cycles as I just showed it to you, okay? And the duration of the pulse is the pulse length or the width. PRI is the time interval between two pulses. Okay. Pulse recurrence interval it is also known as pulse recurrence period. And then there is pulse recurrence frequency, which is PRF. It is the number of pulses transmitted in one second. Okay. PPS, pulses per second. It is also known as pulse recurrence rate, PRR. The relation between them is PRI is equal to 1 upon PRF. Okay, we shall solve a problem also. Before that, factors affecting range. Okay, so transmission power affects range of the uh, radar. As in, uh, more the power, more the range. Okay, object that is there in the, uh, uh, in our case, is the aircraft. The size of the aircraft, the shape of the aircraft, structure. Okay, uh, for example, a bigger aircraft will be easily detectable by the radar. So the range is better. The shape also, okay, if it's sleek, it is difficult to detect like the fighter jets and structure in terms of the metallic body, metallic properties. And uh, for information like the tip and the nose of the aircraft do not reflect that well, uh, but the side fuselage reflects more. Okay, uh, the range also depends on aircraft height and height of the radar also so maximum theoretical range is uh, 1.25 into uh, root of transmitter height plus root of receiver height all of all in feet above mean sea level okay it also gets affected by atmospheric conditions such as rain humidity temperature 
etc. So let's look at some numericals here. If the PRF is 500 pulses per second, what is the PRI of the transmission? Okay, so PRF is 500. And uh, so if you just put it in the formula, you'll get one by 500, which is 2000 uh, microsecond. Okay, that's how you do it. Then another one is uh, if the time taken for an echo to return is 250 microseconds, what is the distance of the object? Okay, so distance is speed into time and uh, any electromagnetic uh, wave will be traveling at 3 into 10 to the power 8. That is something that you have to really know all the time. And time is uh, 250. So the thing is that time taken is two-way. Okay, it's an echo. So that's why that I have to find distance is only between two points. So that's why I'm doing 250 microsecond divided by 2. Okay, so that I get the distance. So when you solve this, you will get 37,500 meters, which is, of course, converted as shown, 20.25 nautical miles. Okay. All right. So, yeah, another uh, numerical is find out the maximum theoretical range. Uh, let's say the aircraft is at flight level 400. Height of the radar station is 11 meters above mean sea level. So what will be the theoretical range? So a little bit conversions because we have to put it in the feet. So flight level 400 is 40,000 feet and 11 meters is 36 feet. So when you put it into the formula here, 36 is of course that and 40,000. So you will get 257.5. Okay, so that's the maximum theoretical range. Generally, the practical range is obviously lesser than what is theoretical because it gets affected by atmospheric conditions, object type, and a lot of other things. All right, that's it on this video. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to this uh, YouTube channel. Like this video as well. Uh, go to the Facebook page and Instagram. Follow us there. F f do not forget to share it with your friends. Comment below if you have any doubts. I'll surely get back. Uh, these are the links on your screen. Cheers and happy landings, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.